media. Go find example of don't flex on a slow day in media. Oh no. All right. So I was fascinated by this story, right? You may not have noticed this because people always act like I cannot be disconnected from the social media universe. But I went 24 consecutive hours without being on the Twitter, even for a second. I sent a couple pictures on Instagram, but I was not on at all. You can check about it. But the day this happened, I'm pretty sure was the day I was off. Or did it start on Friday? Because I left on Friday and I didn't come back into the world until Saturday or something like that, right? But I had basically missed it. But when it first started, my immediate thought on that was, oh boy, black Twitter is going to kill this. Because see, this is something that happens in this universe of black Twitter. And I hate when people call things Black Twitter. Like, it really bothers me because it's black people on Twitter. It's no different than anything else. And not every black person knows each other. You know what I mean? It's just black people talking. And I don't understand necessarily why it fascinates people so much. However, 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 one thing I do find that transpires in this black Twitter universe, right? Black Twitter will find. One person who says one stupid thing, and that person might have like 35 followers, and that person will be the pinata all day long. Everybody and their moms will be retweeting this one person over and over and over. Like your battery is done for. Hey, I give you an example of this, right? How many of y'all remember that fireman that, that black Twitter tried to get fired? Does anybody remember the fireman that black Twitter tried to get fired? Now, if you don't remember the fireman that black Twitter tried to get fired, let me tell you this story. This is how it went. Like, one morning, I was doing searches on Twitter, and it was after the Cam Newton Patriots game, right? So I ran a search, and I think the search term I used was hate Cam Newton. I normally search for Cam Newton and the so-called N-word just to see who's mad, but I'm pretty sure I searched for a hate Cam Newton. Either way it goes, I found this tweet from this fireman, so I didn't even retweet it directly as I recall. I like copied the link and put the link into a tweet and said something about him, and boom, sent it out. I didn't think nothing else about it. Now, maybe, just maybe, it is entirely possible that other people arrive at this man's tweet by itself. So I don't want to pretend like I'm my homeboy's daddy who swears up and down that he was the first person to call Barry White the walrus of love and says the whole world is biting off his style calling Barry White the walrus of love, right? I may have been totally random, but I didn't think anything about it. Next thing I know, y'all have found where that dude worked. Y'all found the town he lived in. Y'all found all his information. Now, it should be noted that this fireman said that if Cam Newton's house was on fire, he wouldn't go put out the fire. And that is a bit problematic to say if you are like a fireman, right? Like, I do, I can't pretend like I don't appreciate somebody going to find this dude under that set of circumstances. Like, I totally get it. I'm with that all day long. But this dude was nobody. And all of a sudden, the sleuths came out. Y'all cracked the case, right? I saw something on here today about some girl who put up a fake picture of some gumbo. And y'all cracked the case. So this woman was a PR executive. So that's why she deserved to get fired, if nothing else. Because you can't be a PR executive telling that age joke like that woman told that age joke. But she did the worst thing she possibly could have done after she told that age joke. She got on a transcontinental flight. Now, I need to know what airline she out there flying that ain't got no Wi-Fi on the transcontinental flight, right? But apparently she don't check Twitter while she on a flight to Africa. Did she even say where she was going in Africa or did she just pull a nod? 
and say she was going to Africa. Did she just say she was going to Africa? That's problem number one. She was just flying to Africa. Now, apparently, Francis in Maryland, a.k.a. Francis the African, says that they never had Wi-Fi on the flight to Africa. And I just don't understand why. Why not? But since she was flying to Africa, she ain't had no Wi-Fi. Now, normally, when black Twitter gets you, the only thing you got to worry about, right, is your mention or the power of your app, right? Like, how much battery? You know what I mean? That's your concern. Because one thing about it, you get on this internet and fuck with your boy, not only are the masses headed your way, but your battery better be ready. Because we about to be hitting your mentions like a pinball machine, bruh. A pinball machine. That's normally your biggest concern. This woman got fired before she hit the ground. Has Justine landed yet is one of the single funniest things I have ever, 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 ever seen. Absolutely hilarious. And this woman had no idea. She just got on a plane and she just thought that she was going to go to Africa. And her little age joke would just walk across the table. That shit ain't walk at all. I thought that lady said she worked in HR, in PR. Like, people think they can just say whatever they want about Africans, about Asians, and to a lesser degree, about women, right? And it's not that everybody thinks you can say whatever you want about women. It's just that there are some people who are just so especially savage, right? Like, most people got better sense than that. But Asians and Africans, the woman once again said she was flying to Africa. To Africa. Who knew she had seen Belly? On top of Belly, speaking of Nas, in Africa. That line, and if, there, if this world, it, it, uh, if, the, if, if, uh, if, if I rule the world, there we go. And if I rule the world, I remember when that came out, and I was trying to explain to my daddy that rap was a little more positive than he had given it credit for being. And I tried to explain to him that some cats was out here trying to spit some knowledge, right? And I told him, I said, well, listen to this line. I was like, yo, now I say, I'll open every cell in Attica, send them to Africa. And my pops was like, why the hell would you do that? Why would you send them some engineers? Why, why, why would you send them some doctors? Why are you sending them a bunch of convicts? Come on, Nas. And I ain't never thought about that. And now I'm looking at Nas. Like Nas. You ain't got nothing else that you can see it. You gonna see the homie horse. And some of his partners from from the jail over to Africa. They gonna get to Africa and do what, Nas? What they gonna do? They gonna get to the shore and then what? They gonna start they gonna start their own businesses, Nas. Is that what they gonna do? You gonna get them out of jail and they gonna go over there and open a store. Where are you gonna send them, Nas? You gonna send them somewhere that speak English? Nas, I don't know if you know this, but they don't speak English in all of Africa. You send them dudes over to Senegal. They'll swim back if they have to. Please, Attica, take me back. I can't understand a word none of these people are saying. Please, Nas, call Attica 
and let them know I made a terrible mistake and I want to come back home. <laughs>